It's April 16th, so with tax season now in the rearview mirror, some may be wondering how to lower their future tax bill with charitable giving. WAFF 48's Sean Dowling spoke to a financial expert, Marshall Clay, with the Welch Group about what to keep in mind. Giving a little and getting back even more. Here to break down the best ways to give charitably, Marshall Clay with the Welch Group. Now, Marshall, what do people need to know for next year? Yeah, so I think you really need to understand your tax situation, yep. and I boil it down to understanding whether or not you fall into the standard deduction category or the itemized deduction category. So if you fall in the standard deduction category, everybody gets a, a lump sum, a standard lump sum amount that they can deduct against their income. Mm -hmm. So for 2024, it's $29,200 for a couple married filing jointly, $14,600 if you were a single filer. So that's the right. first thing to understand. So if you fall in that standard deduction category, that's a big deal. Now, if you fall in the itemized deduction category, you basically take you know state and local taxes, some home mortgage interest, health care costs, and charitable giving, and you add all those, all those itemized deductions up. And if they exceed your standard deduction, well, then you fall into the itemized deduction category. And that's very important because I have a lot of clients they come in and they say, well, you know, I give to charity every year, but yeah, I get this, I get this deduction for it. And, and, and they're oftentimes upset when I tell them that, look, you fell in the standard deduction category, so you really got no benefit from your charitable giving. So understanding where you fall in, in those two categories is very, very important. But in terms of actual charitable giving, you know, I tell people, look, you know, try to be, tr try to get away from giving cash gifts mm -hmm. if you can. Um, if you're fortunate enough to own um, stocks that are in after-tax brokerage accounts, you can give appreciated stock. It allows you to give the amount that you want to give, and it allows you to avoid capital gains taxes on that stock. So that's one great way to give. Another, if you have the ability, is to accelerate your giving. And what I mean by that is, let's say hypothetically, you give $5,000 a year to charity. If you have the ability to maybe accelerate some of that giving and maybe do it for three or maybe even five years, you can give one year, you can give $25,000 to what's called a donor advised fund that 25 can sit in there, you get all 25 of the charitable deduction in one year, and then you can drip out the $5,000 of annual gifts over the next five, and then you start over. So that allows you to launch into that itemized deduction category and actually get a tax benefit. And then finally, I think we've talked about this before, but if you're over 70 and a half, there's some ability to, to gift your required minimum distribution, you know, that mm -hmm. amount that has to come out of those pre-tax IRAs on an annual basis. So really, you know, in, 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 in summary, really it's understanding where you fall in those two different tax categories and then understanding how you can give to give you the biggest tax bang for your buck. Absolutely. Marshall Clay with the Welch Group. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you.